Hey everyone, welcome back to this new Wii episode for the STM32 F4 tutorial. And today we are going to focus and understand the STM32 F4 characteristics and also architecture. After that, we will explore how to access the registers connected directly with the architecture using some predefined C structure. And for the microcontroller unit that we are going to use, so today we are going to use the MCU, or we are going to explore um, the data related to the MCU STM32 F4 46ZE, which is also the board, the Nucleo F4 46ZE. Okay, so we are not going to program it, but we are going to explore the microcontroller. So let's now take a look and go um, find how we can find it. So this is the STM for the ZE, as I shared. But it can it can be it, you can use the same process for whatever the microcontroller you do have if it is an STM32. So you go to the internet and you write the name of the exact name of your MCU. So this is for us STM32 F446 and then GE, and we add datasheet and after that PDF. We should have the result really from the first like the really first. Um, results here so we can get this one here and it should open I open it twice and here we have so first of all the first line give you a lot of um, information so it's a Cortex M4 32 bit we will understand that later on but 32 bit means the microprocessor of the ARM microprocessor of this microcontroller can manage 32 bit in one cycle. And the cycles here, our microcontroller here can go up to 180 megahertz. So it's 180 million cycles per second. So in one cycle, the STM32 F4 can manage this one. So it takes to execute um, a transaction or an action, it takes some cycles, but uh, 32 bits are executed really in one cycle, which is extremely uh, powerful and performant. After that, we do have also a float uh, um, a float point unit, which is uh, which help with a floating point unit uh, and to make it faster. Then we do have the memory, 15, 12 kilobyte of flash, and this is the size of uh, the uh, program that we can put there, and this is quite significant compared to an Arduino. And we do have also 128 plus 4 kilobytes of RAM. This is, of course, up to, but this is a huge microcontroller unit. Um, so we do have really a lot of space to, to put data within our memory. Then we, as I shared uh, initially, it's 180 megahertz. This is one of the most powerful of the STM32F4 family. Uh, it has also, which is extremely interesting, it's up to 20 communication interface. That's a lot. So if you, you do have a, a project with a lot of uh, sensors and devices that you need some specific communication, this is your microcontroller. It's a huge and it's quite made for those kind of communication. So, okay, this is um, mostly what you need to know. There is other details. Uh, you do have here the um, ADC, so you do have an ADC, you do have a DMA, the DMA, and we will explore later on each one of them in great details, but the DMA is the way that sometimes a microcontroller, the microprocessor is busy, the DMA can do some, some, some job, and that can really provide great performance by using it. Um, also, you do have here some advanced connectivity. We are not going to focus on the USB to communication, but you do have also, there is a lot of port, uh, input output port. And also at the end, you probably have a lot of timers here. Yeah, up to 17 timers, that's crazy. So, and each timers would have quite a channel. So it's, it's really, really a big microcontroller in it. If you do have a project with a lot of things, that is quite a nice microcontroller. So that's the part of um, the characteristics of the microcontroller and over high, a quick overview of a microcontroller. Then if you'd like to understand more about the architecture, so you go a little bit to the description here and you find 
this diagram, this very like kind of a complicated diagram, um, but which is really simple to understand as soon as you see every element. So let's zoom a little bit on it. Try to zoom. Yeah, that's coming. Okay, so first of all, in this picture, this is where the, the microprocessor unit is represented, and it's connected with the AHB, the really high performance bus, which will be connecting with all the other peripheral and element of the micro microcontroller unit. This is one of the most important bus. And this one, this is a bus. And this bus here is like this one with the passengers. And the passengers that we do have are bits. So one bus have the capability or the capacity of 32 bits. So here we do have um, the bus and the, the passengers are bits. And the STM32F4 have an um, 32 bus size so that it can transport the information at 32 bus. So if you use variable, and as we have seen in the previous video, um, that the size is greater than 32 bus, uh, 32 bits, this will um, add some cycle to execute um, the what the microcontroller will be doing or the microprocessor too. Okay, so our like the big AHP bus is connected to AHP1, and you do have here 180 megahertz, and this is the maximum speed or the clock cycle that this bus can use. To, to, to transport the information. So the kind of a, the speed limit is 180 megahertz. And we can see that this bus is connected with all the GPIO, like the general purpose input output from the port A to port H. And you do have 180 megahertz speed here. And it means to activate those um, port, you just need to go into AHP1. After that, this bus is split, this huge highway, the AHP1 highway is split to two roads, the APB2 and APB1. So, and the APB2 is connected to some peripherals. Same for the APB1. So both of them are connected to peripherals. And this is how this bus, you can access those peripherals. But you have to see that APB2 have the maximum speed of 90 megahertz where the APB1 have a maximum speed of 35 megahertz. So which means if we are going to use the timer too, and we are going to check this in really great details, the maximum frequency that you will be able to achieve is the 45 megahertz. However, if you are using the timer 9, 10 or 11, you can reach the maximum frequency of 90 megahertz. And we will be able to go really through high details to understand how this is working. Okay, so we're using those one, using those one, we can access different parts of our microcontroller. So now let's see from really programming perspective in a very practical way, how we can access those kind of buses so we, we can, we are able to control some element here and there. And to see that before jumping to the code, before jumping to the code and to understand more, every every kind of this bus or element or peripheral have are are in the memory. So to access to access to them, there's a memory mapping here, and you can see here how each one of the memory it starts from the four zero, the hexadecimal um, four and then three zero and then four zero, and it has a memory. So if you access them. You need to make a pointer for this memory and you can change it. By changing it, you will be asking the bus or the peripheral itself to perform a certain action. You will be asking your microcontroller to do some specific action by accessing this memory. So there's two ways. The first one, you can memorize every memory here. You can memorize them one by one and you become the best. So you have to have, and sometimes, microcontroller, even for the STM32F4, they do change a little bit of their memories, so you have to also uh, memorize that. Else, there is a different way, which some people already have done the whole job to put in place the memories and make the access to them very easy. And that's what we're, this is what we are going to see right now. 
Okay, so let's now start second part where we are going to access accessing those registers that will control the buses. So if we go here and we open here, so we go to project and we call this new project architecture. Architecture here. And for the device, it's an STM 32F44 and then 6. And then it should be a Z and E. And I do have three types. Mine is the T1 here. Okay. I'll be adding the core library and also I'll be adding here my device startup. We can correct this one later on. So if we click this one, it will not be working. That's fine. What we are going to, how we are going to change it is by going here if you'd like to change it. So usually what I do, I just click on version 5 because it has the right one and this. But after that, here, you can change your compiler here to the 99, C99. Okay? Let's put OK. And we are going to start here. Just let's put the target. Let's keep this good practice to put the target name so people will understand that we are using a different tar target. So F4 and then 46ZE. And after that, for the source group here, just I recall this one app, and after that I will add my main. Add a new item. C main dot uh, C. Okay, and let me create my main function int main. It will be having a void, and after that I will be returning a zero, just for return zero okay so let's check if all the connection are good so if i use my st link and go to setting i'm connecting to my microcontroller and everything works well okay so now to access those memories you need to first to understand that there is kind of a kind of a book or registers to show you so the first one what you have seen here is those how those memories are organized within the memory stack but to understand how they are connected and work together you should not looking for the data sheet but actually the reference manual you go to the reference manual this should be good for everything that it will be always the first or second result and you have a huge one so better to open this one in um, directly, not here. I should open it in a different way, but anyway. So let's go here. And if I would like to control and go back to the description again, and for example, to give power, because what I do is I say, okay, for the bus, you do have this highway, and I would like to open the road for the GPIO A. To see which which exactly port that control this, we need to go here in the clock control where to open kind of the power and enable it. And you go to the register. And you can find here within this register, you should find enable register. And within those register, you are able to enable and really literally physically enabling power to this register so you can see here enabling the port a and from clock perspective that will be the first one we are trying now to access the memory so what we have to do we just try to see how we can do it and this is by going to device and the system stm32f4 by doing this and clicking here there is two kind of library the first one is STM32F4XX. And this one, so if I go here and I, I click just by clicking here and getting a little bit, looking a little bit, you will, we should find include, a certain include for that one. So let's copy this one here. So you go to device and then click the system STM. And before adding it, 
just you can understand the difference. So let me edit it and um, comment it, but let's make this one bigger. So what we, if I would like to check and let's go back to this memory one. So I would like to um, check this RCC or this clock enable um, bus. And I would like to enable this GPIO, um, GPIO a, port A. So if I just put RCC here, you see nothing is happening. Just just even I do have an error said undeclared identified RCC. But if I increment this library that I'm adding and by putting RCC and adding a pointer, this comes here and point this that will be a structure pointing to some registers. And as we have seen, we would like to point to the APB1 enable register. So if we put here and follow the rules that we have seen in a previous video using um, the binary operation, and if I put one, whatever binary, hexadecimal or even decimal, and here I'm putting a, bin a decimal one, this one should enable the first one here and enable GPIO a pin, uh, port. Okay, so now we just have to save, build, and load our code. And just to see the difference, so if I go for um, the debug mode, and after that go to peripheral RCC, which is here, so I'm going to APB1 enable register, you can see that all the um, bits of this register are set or a reset mode. So let's go here and run our code. And you can see now that now I enabled GPIO A or the port A and I'm ready to start using it. Of course, further setup are required and we will see it in the next episode to have the pin working as a general input output. But you can see using this way, using this access, we could set up this um, GPIO and get it ready. It will be same for all other the peripheral. So if we can go here and connect both libraries. So if we go back to the data sheet and see APP2. So if we go to APP2 um, here, for example, enable register, we can see we do have timers, UART communication, ADCs, SPI system config, and also some PCI and other timers. So if I go back here also to the APB1 um, register, so and I go here APB1, you can see that I also have a big bunch of timers here, some UART, also I2C communication. Okay, and let's have a final check regarding the understanding of this library that we included to our program. So let's leave the debug mode. And if I go to this RCC APB1, let's go to RCC here and go to go to definition of RCC. It opens this STM32 F446 um, file, which is a huge file, huge file. And this is the file where all the um, memory has been mapped and made as simple as exceeding using the structure that points to a certain memory. I hope for today, so this is all for today. So we have been seeing the architecture of the STM32F4 microcontroller. We understood um, some of its characteristics and most important, how we can access the memories that will manage or the register that will manage all the peripherals of the microcontroller unit. So really, again, thank you so much and wish you a very good day and see you in the next episode where, where we will start really controlling a GPIO. Thanks a lot and see you again. Bye-bye.